All right, how's everyone doing? I'm Rich Chalenza, and uh, thanks for tuning in to the Rich Chalenza Show. WTF are you talking about? So what I want to get into today is regarding your body, and do you love it? Um, I know that sounds kind of wacky sometimes when I ask these questions, but the truth is I think most people, when they um, think about themselves, they almost get uh, uncomfortable talking about themselves. Um, and the truth is, I don't think a lot of times they love themselves or they love all the strengths they have. They only really focus in on the weaknesses. I go through this in my Mastering Self-Confidence program. But um, I could just speak, you know, uh, this is kind of what I went through. And I think a lot of guys were kind of programmed this way to a certain degree is like, is and women too, is when you think about yourself, you're always looking at all the flaws you have. So even if you started if you, if I was talking to you right now or anyone and said, hey, what do you think of your hair? Most people would be like, well, it's too thin or it's too, I don't like my receding hairline. I wish it was a different color. Uh, I don't like uh, the way it, it, it lays, whatever the case may be. Then we could even move down to your eyes hypothetically. Hey, what do you think of your eyes? Well, I wish they were blue or I wish they were this. I wish they were uh, that. Or how about your skin? Well, I wish I was a little darker skin or I wish I was a little lighter I don't like this about that. How about your teeth? Well, I wish they were, you know, unless you had braces. I wish they were straighter or whiter. How about your body in general, like your chest, your arms? Oh, I wish they were bigger. I wish I was fitter or, you know, you're always almost when you talk to people, for the most part, they're always complaining about their body. And I get it. It's not, it's not that you dislike your body, but I don't know how it came to be to the point where in society where we stopped kind of loving ourselves and said, you know what? What's kind of amazing is I have hair. If you just have hair, say you're balding. Okay. I'm bald, but not disliking yourself because you're bald or feeling uncomfortable that you're bald. Same with your skin. Obviously there's a whole different aspect to that, but I'm just saying in general, when, you know, looking at your skin or your, you're just, your, your body on a whole, you know, it's the foundation of who you really are. Mentally, physically, that is really, it's, it's, your mind is your mind and then you're inside this shell, I believe, which is your body. But if you don't love your body, how is truly your body supposed to take care of you? If you have a pet, for instance, I'll just say, like a lot of us do, you have cats, dogs, or all these things, you want to make sure they are as healthy as possible. Usually you're saying wonderful, kind things to the animal. You make sure it goes to the vet. You make sure you take it to get groomed properly. You're, uh, you know, you're cleaning it. You're trying to give it the best foods because you want it to be healthy and you want your dog or cat or whatever animal you have to live as long as possible because you want to spend, you know, time with them. You love them. I think when it comes to people's own body, then they kind of neglect themselves. And I never really understood that. Now, and I'm not talking about when I'm saying neglect yourself, that doesn't mean um, that you have to never drink or you never smoke or you never do certain things that may be hurting your body, maybe not. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking day in and day out mentally. How do you feel about your body? When you look in the mirror, what do you see? Is it somebody that you really actually... Um, that you kind of respect is it, it, it because I go through this with sickness because I'm very fortunate and uh, over the last 30 years I very seldom ever get sick but in my youth and I, I still have these issues where I sometimes I have problems um, I used to call it reverse ex, uh, anorexism where I always look at myself and I always think no matter how big I get or I got I always felt very thin puny and like a weakling which on one case, when I was growing up, I started to have all this anger because I was so small, even though I was strong, and I started to lift heavier and heavier weights, and it, and it just helped me become so much stronger is actually having hatred for my body. I know that sounds kind of wacky, but I think what pushes a lot of people physically is because they're not satisfied with who they are or their results. It's kind of makes sense, right? But I got to the point where no matter how big I got, I want to be bigger. Now, the one thing, though, I realized is the more I, I kept telling myself that I'm not going to get sick, I very seldom ever get sick. So I looked at myself as maybe not being in the physical condition I want to be in, but I physically would not allow anyone else or anything take over to make me sick or weak. And I did a podcast creating your own placebos or things like, or even when I meet somebody who's sick, people are like, oh my God. I'm going to get you sick or people think when they're on someone, they're going to get, I'm quite the opposite. I think I'm going to get you healthier. It's a reverse. I don't let anyone or anything 
I, I'm hoping no disease or anything. I don't, and it may happen. I'm not going to say, but I believe my body is strong enough to take on anything. And even weather conditions, because just in the last probably couple months, I've flown in and out of Canada, probably, I don't know, seven to 10 times. And a lot of times I live in Florida, it'll be an 80 to 100 degree difference in weather change. I go in and out uh, the states. I'll literally go from, you know, Florida to, you know, I've discussed this before to, you know, Canada, it's 20 below. And then I'll be in California and all of a sudden it's 70 and then I'm back into Canada and it's 10 below. And then I shoot back to Florida and it's 80. But again, <clears throat> I think if you're having problems a lot of times, um, I think fe feeling a certain way, it's because mentally we have bogged ourselves down, making our body and our mind feeling not valued. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but if you, again, not just a pet, but if you devalued something continuously and kind of beat it up. And I talk about this with food a lot of times too, because I like a lot of Italian foods or things. And I'm trying to eat healthy pretty consistently, but believe me, I don't on the road. I eat a lot of shit food too. Um, just because I'm in airports so much, there's nothing I can really do. You can't always be eating salads. I, I can't. So I am stuck in a lot of positions where I eat junk food once in a while. I don't like the junk food conquer my mind to say, oh my God, this is going to put me in a horrible shape. Or would, to a certain degree, anything I'm doing really start to make me like weak, I guess you could say. I do a lot of things thinking, well, this is just something that's going to supplement me for the moment. And I know in the future, I'm going to be eating better foods. I'm going to be healthier. But if you took all the foods, a lot of people do eat continuously and you're stuck it in a pot throughout the day and you mixed it. I said, what does it really look like? And I don't mean that in a gross way. I mean, like, are these, is what you're putting your body to healthy, making you stronger again, or are you again, destroying it? Now that again, doesn't mean you have to always eat healthy and all these different types of things. But if you truly love yourself, which you should, and if you don't, whatever, but if, if you really don't love yourself, how's anybody else supposed to? But if you don't love your body and your mind, and you believe you're strong and, um, really start looking at all your strengths instead of constantly bogging yourself down with all your weaknesses. Because if you work for somebody uh, and somebody was always, you know, badgering you, you know what that feels like, right? You feel like an asshole, like your boss just keeps saying how shitty you are. You may even have, you could have parents that done this, siblings, bullies, whatever. If somebody's always beating you, you know, verbally abusing you, you might be doing that in your own brain. You don't even realize it. You may be saying, man, I'm stupid all the time. Man, I'm, I can't, uh, I can't succeed. I'm always this. Or why does this? And you know, all these different things where if you kind of just change your mindset, and again, this isn't going to happen overnight. And again, going to a gym, right? And saying, oh, I'm going to work out. Then I'm going to feel better about myself. That's usually not the case because most people quit the gym. And even if you do go to a gym, you may start getting in better condition, right? Physically, but there's so much more to life than just one aspect. So you may get in better shape. You may look better, but I can assure you have a lot of other issues that you're going through. Besides that, again, it could be, you think you're, you know, you're not sharp enough, or you may think you're, uh, whatever you think you are. Again, your hair's not good enough, your skin complexion, or you you don't, um, you're not, you don't, you, you can't speak fluently, uh, or you're not, you never were a great student, or you're always failing, all these different things. I really think it just start with your mind and your brain, and to really start figuring out that you are incredible, no one else is really like you, and I know that sounds like a weird pitch, but you have to start figuring out what works for you, what is going to start making you feel better about yourself. Right. And I think a lot of times it could just be small things. Like I think a lot of people don't get enough rest or sleep or take naps and they're, they're tired a lot. They're really exhausted They're Uh, and I have friends like that. And then what happens to it too, it also spirals because then all of a sudden they're always tired. Then they kind of become lazy. They don't know why they're lazy. Then they, I'll just use stop working out or they start, um, becoming lazy. Uh, also then they start eating more fast food because they're too lazy to make food. Um, or they, you know, they, they had two jobs or they, they're too lazy to take on a second job, even though they may have time and all the, it's like a spiral effect. A lot of decisions we make, I'm just using sleeping as one of them. And it also could be the food you're eating. Again, not saying that you have to eat healthy all the time, but if you're always kind of eating shittier food, what type of energy are you going to have? Again, you're kind of beating your body down. You don't even know it. And then before you know it, you're like, my God, look at myself. I'm overweight. Look at me. I'm burnt out. 
um, all these different types of things. And it could be just some small changes. It could be portion, uh, portion control in food, like I said, the times you're eating. But you need to figure out what is going to slowly but surely make you feel good about yourself. You have to do a flip. They did this thing once I saw on a talk show where they were, you know, interviewing people while they walk down the street. You know how they do that and says, hey, what makes you special? And most people were like, special? I'm a this. I'm a, I can't even hold it. I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm of this and that. One guy in L.A., which was hilarious, one kid, he was a young kid, like a teenager. He's walking by and they said, hey, what are you... What do you find your your qualities about yourself? He goes, I'm handsome, I'm smart, and I'm gold driven. And then he just kind of walked away from them. And they were like the whole crowd, everybody was going crazy because everybody was quite the opposite of that. And sometimes I think when we're younger too, if you looked at like our youth, we weren't bogged down with a lot of the bullshit we end up bogged down with. And I think a lot of people in society, we need to let what they've said to us or how they've treated us kind of get to us. Don't let that happen. Uh, and again, when you were younger, you may or may not have been bullied, but you really kind of liked yourself, I think, a lot. Like, for the most part, I'm not saying you loved yourself, but you were kind of busy interacting and not so caught up with how you looked or if you were fat always or if you were thin. I mean, don't get me wrong, that was a part of it, but it was like, you know, what would you were kind of more interested, I think, for the most part of just, you know, doing fun things with your parents, school projects, sports. It could have been anything. Um, if you're intelligent, you could be playing games with your friends. I don't care if it's Dungeons and Dragons, playing video games, whatever the case may be. But for some reason, as we got older, time went on. And all of a sudden, I think we just started to lose respect for our body, I guess, is what I'm saying. And I'm, And you don't have to, I don't believe, feel that way. And it's hard for me to tell anybody how they should feel. But if that's hurting you, just, you know, kind of switch it around. Try different things. And also, I think, too, try to be around people that are actually going to bring you up. And learn by example. A lot of times I see people are always looking for um, people to treat them a certain way. They demand respect. But they're really not that respectful of others. I think if you truly, uh, especially with social media and all these different things, if you really are... Uh, somebody who's arguing or fighting or always, uh, you know, just in these disputes where kind of flip it and just start leaving message. You don't have to leave any message you don't want to, but I'm saying if the only message you kind of leave is more on a positive note and you don't let people like make you feel like shit or kind of, uh, I guess, finesse you into these arguments or all this different shit you're getting involved with. If you kind of just start shifting that, because I had to do that and take the high road. And even if somebody tries to get you a little nuts, you just... You can delete it. You don't even have to respond to it. That goes for texts, emails. Eventually, people are going to get a, you know, a feel for you to say, this guy doesn't put up with my bullshit. They're most likely going to leave. They have no other choice. And then if they want to try to bully you, you confront them very nicely and you tell them the situation that you're not putting up with this shit anymore verbally, not through social media, text again, or email or any of that face-to-face. -face. And tell them, I'm not going to let people you know, treat me you basically you're not going to be treated like that anymore and you don't want to treat yourself like that so that's really what this was about is really trying to figure out do you um do you love yourself and being realistic about that approach and i know we all have weaknesses we all wish we could probably make a lot of changes to ourselves and i don't care how good looking you are i don't care how you know in good a shape you are i don't care where you are financially everybody has things that they want that they don't have everybody has insecurities Everybody has strengths and weaknesses, so I don't want to hear any bullshit. Uh, no one's perfect. And the ones usually that you think are perfect, usually from what I've come across, have the most insecurities, which sounds crazy, but it's usually that way. I don't know why. I'm not saying that for everyone, but the one thing I'm going to wrap up here is say, really, instead of beating yourself up verbally, you know, don't lie to yourself for one, but back, that's the number one thing. And two is don't realize what you're doing, your behavior, what you're doing. Are you really helping your body? And I just did a podcast on working out where for many, many years, I was lifting too heavy of weights and beating myself up. And I don't know if you've ever watched bodybuilding or any of that, like Ronnie Coleman, 
um, a lot of bodybuilders. I'm not going to get in and start listing them all. They, in professional athletes, let's just say, um, you don't realize you're beating the shit out of yourself. I'm not calling myself a professional athlete, so don't get that mixed up. What I'm saying is for years, I lifted a lot of heavy weights where in turn, I wasn't looking to my future. What was it doing to my health? What was going to happen in the future? I was just looking for the here and now, getting bigger, stronger, all these things. But I really, after time in the last five years realized I took a major toll on my tendons, my joints, my muscles, everything. So you got to look at your life like, am I, what am I doing now? If I really do, if you're 40, do I really want to live to 80? Because if, if you're not, if you're smoking a lot or drinking or just beating the shit out of yourself, not getting the proper rest, if you kind of feel shitty now, can you imagine what you're going to feel like then? And don't think like, oh, in five years, I'll clean my act up. By the time you get to that point, you've already damaged your body. So again, that doesn't mean you have to make all these major changes today. Just start looking at the future like if if you do plan on living longer. And a lot of people don't give a shit. You know, most people are like living for the here and now. And I get it. Um, but if you do plan on at least trying to be somewhat healthy, make sure you take care of your hips, your knees, your joints, your heart, obviously. Stop neglecting your health because uh, that famous saying, it's easy to live a life in shape. Right, it's horrible or hard to be to live a life out of shape, and people don't realize the difference. Just taking care of yourself a little goes a long way, because it's you think by being being lazy actually will be easier. It's actually a lot harder. It's harder to actually be lazier. You just don't realize it because you're lazy. But sitting around and all that shit, as time goes on, you may become a diabetic. You may have heart disease. You may, uh, tons of things start to happen. That's hard. Or if you think just. Working out, maybe eating a little better and doing all these things um, are harder. But truthfully, that's going to, once you get into a rhythm, that's going to be much easier for you and easier on your body. So just something to think about. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, thanks for listening to the uh, Rich Salenza Show, WTF, are you talking about? I also have a YouTube channel. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter. We have Instagram. So, and I have a program, Mastering Self-Confidence. Uh, trying to help men find um, the woman or women of their dreams, even if they've been through a bad breakup or divorce. And I get into a lot of this type of stuff in my program. It's 45 hours long. Um, yeah, we're getting ready to launch that actually officially. So uh, if you like this type of stuff that I'm talking about, or you may think I'm outright crazy, but I definitely have, I look at things much differently, I think, than most people to a certain degree, just because of my upbringing and just what I've learned throughout my life. And um I think I could just help some people just even if it's one, I say one thing I always think about like one or two things that you could think about that could be kind of life changing or that doesn't again mean you have to go change your life. I'm just saying like, wow, I never thought about it from that perspective because that's when I listen to all these different people, most of it just sounds the same shit that I've heard before, right? But it, it's those little, little sentences or those little things that someone says, wow, I never thought about it from that view. And those are the game changers, I think. So sometimes you got to listen to 15 minutes of bullshit to get that. Um, and then sometimes you listen to people and you're blown away for 15 minutes. And then sometimes you listen to people for hours. You're like, this is the same old shit I always heard. So I get that too. So, all right, I'm going to wrap it up there. All right. Take care. And I wish you nothing but the best.